Hello and welcome to SJ's classes. This is the last poet and poem that I shall discuss as part of the paper 20th century Malayalam literature in English translation. Please do watch my other video lessons posted on my YouTube channel on poets like ONV Kurup, Balajandran Chullikad, Vishnu Narayana Nambudri, B. Sugadagumari, K. Sachidanandan, Kadamanetta Ramakrishnan, Nalapattu Balamaniyamma, Vailopilli Sridharamenu, K. Ayyipappanikar. In this video lesson, I will discuss the poem Advent written by the Malayalam poet D. Vinayachandran. Before we commence reading the poem, let's go through a short biographical and literary sketch of D. Vinayachandran. D. Vinayachandran is an Indian poet who wrote in Malayalam. He was born at Kallada in Kollam district and worked as a Malayalam professor with the Collegiate Education Service from 1991 to 2006. After his retirement as professor from School of Letters under MG University, he was involved totally in literary works. He started writing when Malayalam literature was entering the era of modernity. But his work stood out for its fusion of tradition and modernity. He always maintained a distance from the poetic trends of the modernist period. This made his poetry unique and individualistic. Through his poems, he created an illusory or dreamlike world through metaphors, symbols and broken images, imparting a profound philosophical state to his poems. His poems are known for their folk touch and musical quality. Some of his notable poetical collections include Vinay Chandran De Kavidagal that came out in 1986, Naragam Oru Prema Kavidayedunnu that was published in 1991, Beetle Kullavari 1992, Samastha Kerlam Piyo 1999, Chirap 2007, and Penalty Kick 2008. He was also a translator. He translated poems of the Spanish poet Loka and the Bajana poems from medieval Kannada, which attained its zenith in the 12th century. Now, a short note on Bajana poems. These are passionate, intensely personal and ahead of their times kind of poems. These free verse poems speak eloquently of the futility of formal learning, the vanity of wealth and the evils of social divisions. The Vajanas stress on the worship of Shiva through love, labor and devotion as the only worthwhile life goal for the Vajanagara, which is the Vajana poet. I am sure you are not familiar with this term Vajanagara or Vajana poet. That is why I incorporated a short note on this particular term or this kind of poetry. So he has also translated Vajana poems from medieval Kannada. For his contributions to Malayalam literature, Vinay Chandran won many laurels and awards like the Kerala Sahitya Academy Award, Changambura Award, Pandalam Kerala Varma Kavida Award and Ashan Smaraga Kavida Braskar. D. Vinay Chandran died on 11th February 2013 at the age of 66. So that was a sneak peek into the biography and literary output of this particular uh, poet. Now let's start reading the poem Advent. The poem Advent, with the Malayalam title Varavu, was written in 1995. It is taken from the collection Samastha Kerlam Piyo. The poem is actually a lament on the environmental degradation happening all around us. Let's read, read the very first stanza of the poem. A desert grows slowly in our midst. So at the very outset of the poem, the poet declares the theme that he is to discuss. 
the theme of environmental degradation. He says a desert grows slowly in our midst. Let's try to understand what this desert is. It literally means an arid land with little or no vegetation. And symbolically it might mean or it might be pointing out the human actions that is gradually creating a desert out of the uh, lush green vegetation that we have around us. So figuratively it stands for the human actions that uh, gradually degrade nature around us. A desert grows slowly in our midst. Those who listen to the song of moonshine don't hear the gentle sigh beneath the soil. Those who are lured by materialistic prospects, you know, they don't listen to the grief of the soil or earth or nature. That could be the interpretation of this particular verse. They don't realize that, cinched by it, children cry out all of a sudden, leaving aside their toys with numbers and pictures. So, these people, these people who are lured by materialistic aspects, they don't realize that you know, it, this particular heat or children are being cinched by it. Cinched by it means burned by the soil or earth, burned by the changing climate. Uh, the reference is probably to the climatic changes happening on earth, the rise in temperature, global warming and all those things. So these are killing people. These are putting people in an uncomfortable situation. And these people who are lured by all these materialistic aspects, they don't realize it. It's true. Swinging their legs, splashing the water of the river, the male and the female share the enveloping fragrance of the lone lotus beyond the seven skies. The mountain climbing up and up, opening the star threshold, ebbing to the other shore of darkness. So it is true, swinging their legs, splashing the water of the river, the male and the female share the enveloping fragrance of the lone lotus beyond the seven skies. So you have positive aspects of the nature coming into play in this particular stanza. Uh, you have the uh, pictorial descriptions of the nature that you see around you and how humans enjoy these picture, I mean, uh, these sights and sounds of nature. The male and the female share the enveloping fragrance of the lone lotus. Lone lotus means the lonely lotus beyond the seven skies. Uh, this could be a reference to the concept of seven skies or heavens that is part of many religions like the Abrahamic religions uh, and as well as the as well as Hinduism. The mountain climbing up and up opening the star threshold a wing to the other shore of darkness. The sky and the stars act as the threshold or an entry point to the other world. And uh, other show of darkness could uh, refer to eternity or the other world, you know, where we lead our afterlife. Now, this is what should happen. This is what must ideally happen. But what really happens is being narrated in the next stanza. But we get into Jalaluddin's car, split a pill into two, and give one to Grandpa Agasti. Mirabhan's pigeons disappear in the billowing smoke from the factory. So what should have had happened was narrated in the previous stanza, but what really happens is being narrated in this particular stanza. Instead of all that was said in the previous stanza, what happens is you get into Jalaluddin's car, split a pill into two and give one to Grandpa Agasti. Uh, both of them taking the same pill which you know could be probably indicative of the lifestyle diseases that we have in common today. So you share a particular pill of yours with Grandpa Agasti. And look at what happened to Mirabhan's pigeons. They disappear in the billowing smoke. Billowing smoke means you know uh, wave like smoke. In the billowing smoke from the factory. So this is uh, the reality that they confront. It is not the river, lotus skies, stars or mountains that they confront, but medicines, smoke, traffic, etc. Look what has happened to the crop. On the bitter gourd, 
crawl like crawl, little worms and pesticides. So nothing is free from pollution. I hope you understand how the poet picturizes the environmental degradation around us. He gives us a beautiful picture of nature and how humans enjoy that particular nature in a few lines and then he narrates the reality. Thus, unaware of the advent of its warriors, the sarod, the cloak and the indescript board the ship on an expedition to Atlantis. So, thus unaware of the advent of its warriors, the warriors of the dark, the warriors that shall destroy this earth, the warriors that shall cause degradation of nature, the sarod, the cloak and indescript. Sarod is a stringed musical instrument. Uh, music, time and indescript, the corpus or body of symbols produced by the Indus Valley Civilization. So what we possess as an asset, you know, they might probably leave this place. And where are they headed to? They board the ship on an expedition to Atlantis. As one drinks water from the fridge with the novelty of infatuation, the flags of the oncoming festival of the desert have already been hoisted. So as you drink water that has been cooled by, the, by an equipment called fridge, what you are actually inviting is or what you are actually hoisting is the flag of oncoming festival of the desert, uh, flag of the oncoming destruction, the imminent doom. Now this flag, you know, uh, it symbolizes the imminent doom and destruction. Flag is portrayed as a symbol of degradation and destruction. Yet poets seek the message of deliverance, putting their ears to their sweethearts bellies. Now, the poets, they write about deliverance. Deliverance means recovery or protection from loss or danger. They write about deliverance preservation and all other things in their poetry in spite of getting symbols of oncoming destructions. They put their ears to their sweethearts bellies. The sweetheart is probably a reference to the poetry, their poetry. And they do this amid the storm of suppressed ire. Suppressed ire means a strong emotion. They do this in the middle of, you know, a, a suppressed emotion. A nestling ventures out on a flight lesson. Nestling means a young bird. It ventures out on a flight lesson. The tears of the lone traveler in the cemetery implore. So you have a lone traveler in the cemetery. Probably the reference is to a dead man. And he makes a request. He implores. O oh universe, give me to a wave to ride on to escape drowning in your ocean. So you hear cries even from cemeteries where people are buried after their death and they are asking for an escape from the imminent destruction. People who are already dead, even they want to escape the place. That is how bad the place is being or that is how bad the situation is. That is how bad the imminent destruction is going to be. But the shadows that bade farewell to the trees Push the gate open with the wheelbarrow of the coffin maker. The shadows that bade farewell to the, farewell to the trees. The trees have lost their shadows, which means we have lost light. We are in darkness, both literally and figuratively. They push the gate open with the wheelbarrow. Wheelbarrow is a small cart. And to whom does this wheelbarrow belong? It belongs to the coffin maker. So you have the coffins ready for you and they have entered your space. The desert has already made a strategic advance into our minds without warning. So though the desert hasn't manifested itself physically, it has taken deep roots in our minds and it happened without a warning. So we have no idea as to when it happened or how it happened, but it is gradually coming into existence. It is gradually materializing. Curfew on love. So this is what has done or this might be the reason. Curfew on love. Curfew means a prohibition or restrictions. The rocket of extremist into the holy Eucharist. You also have, you know, extremist, people with extreme views. They target religion. Eucharist, holy Eucharist is the religious commemoration of Last Supper among Christians. So you have extremists 
you know targeting religion religious rituals chemical and biological war on amorous unions wars happening as a result of unions between certain people or certain countries on their own selfish you know terms and aspects guard of honor for the celebrity guest with wounds sustained by those that remain so guard of honor is an escort for a distinguished guest and what these lines suggest is that it speaks of a time when there would be no difference between ordinary civilians and vips or a time when the ha uh, when there will not be any difference between the have nots and the haves or when the have nots will attack the haves it even speaks of a time when there won't be any more mutual respect or humanity the body doesn't get wet even after a dip in the river why because there won't be any water left in the rain pilgrims animal chariots tree priests blazing moonbeams pretty little handbells globe trotting youth and crazy thoma whose gospel from the rubbish he proclaims himself as the antichrist all become sirens portending doom so as you come towards the concluding part of the poem you are confronted by numerous imageries the imagery of the river without water of rain of pilgrims animal chariots the tree priest the blazing moonbeams the globe trotting youth globe trotting youth means ulagam chuttuna valiban the original title is from the tamil blockbuster movie ulagam sutram valiban which came out in 1970 and it uh, it had uh, the legendary actor mgr as its lead he played the role of a hero uh, provoking the malayalis genius to cynical witticism calling any youth aspiring aging for uh, ullagam chutuna valiban so you have such imagery is being discussed here and also uh, saint thomas who is being described as crazy thomas uh, and saint thomas uh, as you know is commonly known as doubting thomas because uh, he doubted uh, jesus resurrection so he the poet says that it is like he proclaimed himself as the antichrist because he did not believe in christ and all these become sirens portending doom sirens are warning signals so all these uh, depict or foresee danger all these become sirens portending doom portending means to be a sign of so all these act as a warning signal all these act as a sign of the imminent destruction the layers of desert sand and deconstruction like an election notice the heir to several million graves is the lord of the earth so it is the earth that shall inherit every asset of human being it is earth that shall be the custodian of human beings after their death so earth is being described as or uh, earth is being described as that particular entity that shall have everything that is owned by humans and even human beings again from among the skulls scattered around a sunrise the seven leaves that seek the branch of pala tree the stream of milk that seeks the nipple of love every week good friday devoid of sleep so though the poem on the whole talk about the imminent doom and destruction just like uh, on we kurub did in his poem a requiem to mother earth it ends on a note of hope the poem though it talks about imminent destruction it ends on a note of hope that is why you have the picture of a sunrise the sunrise could be interpreted as a symbol of hope uh, the poet does this the poet brings in this note of optimism by comparing it to the crucifixion and resurrection resurrection of jesus christ uh, you have the final reference final line talking about good friday which is a particular day that commemorates the crucifixion of jesus christ so you have this comparison uh, to the crucifixion and the resurrection of jesus christ in the last answer perhaps we might resurrect ourselves from the destruction and how shall we do this through love or by being united just like the seven leaves that unite itself on the branches of the pala tree so in spite of all the uh, images of destruction and doom that he has pictureized and he states at the end that there is little bit of hope that we might resurrect after all these 
degradation and destruction. So with that we come to the end of the poem. Thank you so much for watching this video lesson.